Alright, Lamont here with you with a new thing I'm doing called Versus. I know the name isn't original, but how I'm doing it, I feel it is. So I take two different things, a series, movies, characters, or other things, place them together, and the first in this series is Last Airbender, which I never saw until I wanted to make this video, or Dragon Ball Evolution, which I saw when it came out. The thing these two movies have in common is that they're both atrociously bad adaptations from their source materials. So I'm going to point out a lot of things they got wrong or handled badly. Then at the end of the video, comment what you think is the worst or better of the two. Quick disclaimer, I'm not going to include everything that's changed or done poorly, unless this video would be extremely long. Now, without any restraints, we're kicking it off with The Last Airbender. I'm sorry if I sound weak. It's just this movie took the life out of me. Jokes aside, the opening isn't half bad. That's until you hear Zuko's voice, which they use. Uncle Buck! Use Dante Basco voice, the voice actor for Zuko from the TV show. At first, for some reason, then, if you look carefully at Zuko's face, they took away his scar for makeup. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Take Aang still, but Katara wants to save him for some reason because she just broke him out of ice. I get it, I guess. But the Nickelodeon TV show handled it way better. She cared for Aang because she believed he was the Avatar. No, the original Avatar. I felt James Cameron could have made a better movie than this one. Anyway, Katara saw Aang's marking, she saw him airbend. Just the whole thing was handled better and done better. Then there's Grandma's exposition in the movie. Then Zuko and Iroh never do the fire blast thing on Aang when he escapes. And you never see Aang's avatar state until he goes home or back home. Oh yeah, they changed Aang's name to Ung in this movie, but I'm still just gonna call him Aang because I just like that name more. Now, I'm going to skip until the middle of the movie. While Aang is in prison, I was holding off on this, but it seems like the firebenders need fire around, so they have pyrokinesis in the movie, but pyrokinetic and pyrokinesis in this show. So they entirely skip over the Kyoshin warrior people, and Sokka isn't funny at all yet this far in the movie. Then this Ozo is more intimidating than this. Ozu. Though the live action Ozu seems to care for his son more. I will add that. And then you never see Ozu, only his silhouette. Now I'm going to skip until Zuko helps Ung, I mean Aang, escape more importantly after that and the changes, where Aang is talking to Zuko about his friend he had at the Fire Nation, asking could they have been friends if things were different. That scene is only in the show. I know it's small, but very good character moment that the live action just lacks and doesn't have that much of. And Zhao sucks in this movie. He's not intimidated at all then how does he travel back and forth to the fire nation so much so often i've been ranting a lot here let's get back to the movie pretty much they get to the northern water tribe where basically i care for nothing there but for some reason i'm supposed to care because they've been traveling for weeks together and then i'm supposed to care about Sokka and yui's rushed relationship because they immediately hit it off I will add their relationship in the show was a little rushed too, but fleshed out more than I guess the Northern Water Tribe trains women now cause in the show Paco didn't want to train Katara and Yui isn't getting married anymore. That whole plot point is just gone. So Aang still goes to the spirit world. That sucked obviously. The show did it way better. Anyway, Zuko breaks in and Katara fights him, if you want to call it that. A thing to add that the show just did way better than the actual movie did with Katara versus Zuko. Now let's cut to the Aang chasing away the Fire Nation. For Aang to drive away the Fire Nation, he just makes a big wave and then they run away. Imagine this, you buy a movie ticket for $10, you go see this movie and the ending is just Aang making a big wave. You didn't go see Toy Story 3 to see Aang make a big wave. You didn't go see Despicable Me to see Aang make a big wave. That climax was worse than your wife's. Just kidding. That climax was worse than the movie. Now, now, let's talk about the relationships in this movie. I don't care about Katara's relationship with Aang. I guess the movie thinks because they travel together, I'm supposed to care. I've been in the same classroom with someone two years in a row and I care for them in the slightest. So time does not equate to caring. Human interactions character moments do. Sokka was serious in the show, but he still had jokes and he was all about staying away from the Fire Nation and things, but he still made people laugh. This Sokka just sucks. 
Zuko and Iroh's relationship is fine, manageable. I will throw the movie that. Zuko is just freaking whiny. He has no character moments at all in this movie, and he never takes a revenge against Zhao, you know, for trying to kill him. Zuko never tries to get his revenge, and when it came time to, he didn't. It just really aggravated me because that was a big moment for Zuko. And Zhao, the end for this character is terrible. He just gets picked up by waterbenders, then dropped. Four more last things before I move on to DBE. How firebenders made it to the top makes no sense at all in the movie because it's a lot easier just to cut off access to fire than water, earth, or even wind. So the quick thing about firebending, so why they can just produce fire is because it's a form of energy, which is harnessing the energy in yourself and then just expressing it or pushing it out your fist which is a oversimplified science version but a narrative one is it just works better and it looks cool and what is um so in short why this is so bad it's rushed no character moments firebending and names a lot of the acting wasn't all that good lastly no cabbage guy that makes this movie a zero in my book to leave on a good note at least there's only one last airbender movie next in this versus match is dragon ball eva Lucian. My name is Lamont and I am a toxic fan for Dragon Ball Z. I just had to say that before I go into this movie because I'm going to nitpick the hell out of this movie. The reason being I saved this one for last is because I hold DBZ very near and dear to my heart since it's my introduction into anime. Now let's begin. Starting with the dumbest opening ever. Then this sweat. What? What, what is this? I know there are no wires but if it looks that bad wh why include it? Why is Goku like 17 but looks like a guy in his mid 20s? Oh that's because it is a guy in his mid 20s at the start of dragon ball goku is 11 and then goku goes to high school the original goku probably never heard of high school until he had a son at school goku turns down a fight when has goku ever turned down a fight please let me know in the comment section below i realize i'm only 10 minutes into this movie and i've said all of this but i'll stop for a kind of minute to my defense it's been two minutes since I last said anything about this movie and we're talking about Martian Manhunter because for some reason it gets lost in the director's notes that it was Demon King Piccolo who was supposed to be the main antagonist of this movie not Martian Manhunter because where is his antennas purple turban his actual clothes and I promise Goku has never daydreamed like that though I can vouch he has a staring problem again why is this in high school now Goku goes to a party so the whole entire fight or this whole entire fight was garbage one of the most disrespectful moments to DBZ this movie and this right here is the most disrespectful moment to Goku ever let's return back to the fighting this if you pause right here you'll notice that the poles are nowhere near the other person but yet they hit each other as you can see so from here I'll stop nitpicking and only worry about the story so since Martian Manhunter kills Gohan not Goku when he's grade 8 it takes away the moment and the Saiyan saga when Goku realizes he's the one who killed Grandpa Goku then Bulma seems to be a mixture of launch with her guns that makes sense of who the character is if I'm honest it's terrible but I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of it that that's not a capsule. So we're a quarter of the way through this movie and it has got nothing right. Not the characters, not the world, not the dialogue. The dialogue is so bad. And they make Goku slide his head across a car, like why? Yamcha appears and honestly, he's so generic, but they get it right. He's a thief, but he's not scared of girls and no Peru, sadly. So the group fall in a hole and they're in there for about all day. And then Roche, I'm calling Master Roshi that cause terrible Goku does. Hit him, Roche! Yo! Anyway, Roche jumps out just fine, realizing that he wasted a whole day just for no reason when time is of the essence. For plot convenience, there is a Dragon Ball down there anyway. So in short, this movie follows no real storyline and gets nothing right. Like Ozaru was just Goku's great ape form whenever the moon was out. But this movie makes it to where the great ape form only comes out when there is an eclipse or the Ozaru form. Then the Ozaru form looks like utter crap. He's not a great ape. It's like the size of a super back, which is, is a big ape, but it's not a, a great ape. But anyway, Master Roshi wasn't pervy at all. I only recall King Piccolo having the spaceship he came to Earth with, not a spaceship he flies basically the whole movie with. Goku's clothes are all wrong. His pants look like something a woman would wear to church. If I'm honest, no offense to someone's wardrobe. I'm just nitpicking here and that's what makes this movie so bad. It got everything about Dragon Ball wrong. I'm not saying you can't try to do something new. It's just you can pick this movie apart with everything it does so horrible. But when you do choose to change things, make sure it's at least decent and you know, not a piece of, mm, you get it. 
The best thing to come out of this movie is a thing that didn't come from this movie. And it's Akira Toriyama getting so mad and hated this movie so much that he made Battle of the Gods. Which Battle of the Gods led to Resurrection F. Which Resurrection F led to Dragon Ball Super. And so we ended up getting Dragon Ball Super because this movie was so bad. So the best thing to come out of this movie is a thing that didn't come from this movie. And one thing this movie at least attempts or even tries to do, it tries to make you like the characters at the bare minimum. Give them personality. It's very bad personalities, but personalities nonetheless. And the original Goku has never kissed Chi Chi, so yeah, this is just really bad adaptation. Kakarot, you've never kissed someone? Uh -huh. No, of course not. Why? You're then the last thing I want to touch on before the end of this video, I just wanted to talk about Goku's bad Kamehameha. That's a bad form. I've done enough Kamehameha's to know a bad form in a pool. So it, it's like a bad Bollywood kind of move kind of thing. Like, I, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It just looks very, very terrible. These movies are so bad. It just reminds me of the Godfather scene where he's like, look how they massacred my boy. I know that was a bad representation. I just became the very thing I hate my bad. So now I'm asking you the viewer. I've pointed out numerous things both movies got wrong and handled poorly. Then everything in between that. I even tried to leave each movie on a good note about what the movies handled okay so cast your votes at the top of the screen or in the comment section i'll announce which movie took the bigger l because nobody's a winner with these movies i sat through both of these movies so if you could hook me up with a like but anywho i'll announce the winner on ig at laraf and in my next versus video but if you want to know sooner follow me on ig and tag me in your least favorite moments from one of these movies but if you like this then like this and on that note it's about time for me to space out astronauts. Oh.